Hello everyone, this is Ayushi from Edureka and today we're going to talk about Django REST framework. So without wasting any more time, let's look at today's agenda. So today's session is mainly a practical session. But before we begin the practical aspect, there is some amount of theoretical knowledge that you need to have. So we'll begin the session by first understanding what is an API and how an API fits into Django. After that, we'll have a brief introduction to REST framework and what exactly is REST API and how does it work. Then we'll move on to a demo part where we'll be building a RESTful web API from the scratch. So let's begin the session and discuss the very first topic that is what is an API. So an API refers to application programming interface. Now let me break it down into simple words. So the very first is application. Now you must be aware of an application if you're using a smartphone. Say the games that you play in your phone or the social networking apps that you scroll around or any other software that you use in your day-to-day -day life. So all these comes under your application. Next is your programming. So programming is basically a set of instructions that you tell a computer to perform a specific task. Now using that program you can build a software which makes the life much easier. So that is what programming is. Last is your interface. Now an interface is a point where two applications or you can say programs meet and they interact with each other. Now it basically allows to communicate with one another. And hence API is a way for programmers to communicate with various applications. Now if you go by the Google definition, it is set up different subroutines, different protocols, as well as different tools that you need to build an application software. So these are the terminologies that a developer must be knowing. Now if you look at the image to the right, you can see how different environments that are running in application are communicating with each other through the API. Now for running these API, all you need is an environment that supports the application and the API which is a part of an application. So with this, I guess you've got a simple understanding of what is an API. Now, if you have any doubts, any query related to any of the concepts that I'll be teaching, you can feel free to comment below and I'll be happy to help you with the same. Now, let us move on to our next topic that is an introduction to REST framework. So REST basically describes an architecture which stands for Representation State Transform. It is used for the purpose of web APIs for data communication. It also supports some of the common HTTP methods to make interaction between the machines or you can say applications. Now some of the HTTP methods that are commonly used in REST architecture are GET, PUT, POST and DELETE. So the very first method is GET. Now GET is basically used to return the records or you can see the data that you feed in. So basically GET is used to retrieve a resource. Next is your PUT. So put is used to change the state or you can say update a resource which can be a file, it can be an object or any block. Thirdly is post. Post is usually used to create the resource. And last is delete which is used to delete or remove that resource. So this was all about REST framework. Now let us see what exactly is a REST API. Now any web service that uses a REST architecture, they are called as RESTful APIs or you can say REST APIs. So you must have heard about Facebook APIs or Google APIs or maybe Twitter APIs. So all of them are a REST API. Similarly, if you take it on yourself, say for example, you own a website. You have all your code, you have your database connection and everything is working fine over there. Now suddenly you have more users coming to your website and then you decided to build an iPhone app or maybe an Android app. So now your next thought would be how to connect the database online. And now let's say some more requests come in and you want to make a software desktop application. So again the same question arises that how an iPhone connects or how an Android connects your database online. It needs a website data from there and update the same over here. So isn't this looks confusing and extremely complicated? So what you can do here you can create a RESTful API which will serve all your purpose in one go. Now making a RESTful API you need to have a device access to website data through a common format. So here we'll be using JSON. Now JSON is a data format and it is not at all specific to any of the device. So basically use JSON to communicate within a specific format. So that we can build an Android app, an iOS app or any other software that you want to make. Now one more key feature that comes into picture is that if you have an API that performs certain operations, then you don't have to rewrite that as part of your code and thereby it also reduces the size of the code. Now I guess enough of theoretical part, so let's just directly jump into the demo where I'll be helping you to create your first RESTful API from scratch. So for that you need to first install the REST framework. So everything can be installed using Python package manager. Now if you're using command line, it is very easy to install as you just have to type in pip install Django REST framework. 
or if you're using PyCharm, you can directly install it by going to your settings and it's the same way you do it for other packages. Now, once your installation is done, you need to add this framework in your installed application. So let me go back to my project and explain you how practically it is done. So first of all, let us create a project. So I am in my C drive users Ayushi and MyCharm projects. So here I create a new folder by calling it by Django REST framework. And inside this we'll be creating a project. So let me go to my command prompt and I'll give this location. Now once we're under this, let's just first create a project. So for creating a project, you have to type in Django admin start project followed by the name of the project. So in my case, the name of the project would be my project. Now as you can see here, I have my project. So once you click on it, it has one more file which is named as my project only and one manage file. So if you go and click on my project, it has some more files say in it settings, URLs and WSGI. So if you have any confusion or if you want any explanation related to these files, you can go to my previous recording and get your concepts clear. Next, what we have to do, we have to create an application. So for that, let's go to my PyCharm and open this project. So this is my community version of PyCharm. So let me open it. It's in my C, users, PyCharm projects, Django restaurant and my project. Here it is. So this is my PyCharm. Now you can do the exact same things over here as well. Now for that you can go to the view, tool windows and you can open up the terminal like this. You first have to install your Django REST framework. So for that you have to type in pip install Django REST framework and you can click on enter. For now I've already installed my Django REST framework so it says that requirement is already satisfied. That is like fine. So I'll just clear my screen. So now I'll be creating a simple application, say a web app. Now what I'll be doing in that application is I'll be storing some employees information. Say for example your first name, last name, salary and all that other stuff. So for that you first need to type in pythonmanage.py startup and the name of your application. Let's say it's web app. You can do the same in your command prompt as well but I feel PyCharm is more convenient for me. So if you go on my project, you see the web app is initialized over here. Now inside this, it has different files. It has init, it has admin panel, it has application, it has models and many more. Now if you remember, I have already explained you in the presentation that first you need to go to your project settings and configure everything. So I'll go to my project, this is my settings. And inside this, I have to go to my install applications and I have to write it REST framework. Next, I also have to write in the name of the application that I've just created. So once my project setting is configured, what I'll do next, I'll go to my application and I'll go to my models. So here I'll be creating a model or you can say database where you'll feed in all the necessary details of the employee. So here I'll create my first model. I don't need this. So I'll create a class over here. Class employees models dot. So here let me fill in some details for the employee class. Let's say your first name of the employee or the last name or some employee already to it. So let me feed in some details to it. But I'll mention the max length to say 10. Next is my last name attribute. Again the max length should be 10. And let's say one more field I want to feed in say employee ID. This should be an integer field. Next what we'll have, we'll have a string representation of this. So here what I'll be doing, I'll be creating a method that returns all your fields. And it returns say self dot first name. Next what can I do, I can go to my admin dot py file. Now here I can add and delete employees from the admin panel. So for that we need to first import the model that we've just created. So here my admin is imported. So here I have imported my model which is named as employees. Next we have to register this model. For that we need to write admin.site register 
and your name of your model that is my employees so once your admin panel is created you need to first create a super user so you can again go to your terminal and you can create a super user for that so here is my terminal i can directly write python manage.py create super user oops now here choose some error oh because i have not migrated my table so first we need to migrate a table so for that we need to type in python manage.py and make migrations so this will basically update your table structure so once your migrations are done you just need to migrate it so you have to write migrate so it basically creates your table with the current structure and it feeds in all the details that you have written in your model that is your employee class so here your project has been migrated now let me create a super user so now it asks me for your username so let me type in ayushi email address you can leave it blank as well and i have to give in some password make sure you have a strong password for this so now my super user created successfully so now i can run my server for running my server the command is python manage.py run server now it is successfully started so i'll open my google and i write it over here local host so here as you can see there is no web page that can be displayed over here but we do have a sweet admin page so let me open the admin page for you so it asks me for the username and password that i've just created so my username is ayushi and i have some password so as you can see here i have that web app that i've already created inside that i have created a model which says employees now once we go into that it have an option to add an employee so now let me add some details to these employees so the very first name is say swati last name and let's say the employee id is 1 now let me add some more to this so it may be big say two and i'll add one more say abhilash say the employee id is four and i'll add one more that is samir this employee id is five now here as you can see there is a list of employees that i've just added now once you click on them you will see all the necessary information regarding it the first name the last name and the employee id that we have assigned to it and you can directly delete it from here as well now while going back to it you will see again the list of the employees now let me go back to my code and see what else we have to do now let us create a serializer class now this class is used to convert your model to your json data so json as i already told you json is a format and it is not at all specific to any application now json is used because whenever a user request a website we usually send them back a regular old html format or html response now however we don't want html it's only when you want information from the browser so here we'll be sending them json for that we need a way to convert this model to json so hence a serializer is used so i'll go to my application and i'll create a new python file and name it as serializers so you can see this file right here in the web application so inside this we need to import some stuff from rest framework so first i'll import those things from rest framework import serializers next i have to import my model that is employees so here now let's create a class so class employee followed by a serializer serializers So here, this is my model name, which is my employees, followed by a serializer. So whatever model you want to serialize, just say the name of the class followed by a serializer keyword. Next, this serializers dot model serializer is your inbuilt thing. You don't have to worry about this because you just have your model as a blueprint, which the serializer needs to convert to a JSON format. So next, what we have to do, we have to create a class meta and further configure it. So I'll create a class that is meta. and i fill in the various fields that are used in a employee model i'll create a class meta and uh, here i'll write model the name of my model is employees next i have to configure my fields so if i open my models and here i have first name last name and employee id so let's say i just need first name as a response so here what i'll do i'll here write fields equal to your first name 
and say if you need one more field let's say last name you need first name you need last name but you don't need employee id so you can manually write that you need to display only first name and last name or if not this you can do one more thing to display all your fields that is fields equal to underscore underscore all and double underscore again so this will basically return all your fields present in your employee model so now it will display your first name last name and employee name so i have done this because i don't have much fields to return that's why i return all next let us go to the views.py file and see what we need to display when we hit the api so this is my views.py file so in this file what we have to do we have to just request an api and get the json back for that first of all you need some imports so i've already copied them so let me just paste it over here this saves my time now don't worry i'll explain each one of them so the very first is by default next is your http response which you have been using for any program to return the response next is your get object or 404 now if we get 404 when the object doesn't exist say for example you request some random name let's say amit and this doesn't exist in the company's database so what will happen it will return a 404 so for example i show you practically so as you can see here i have these many employees over here and say i have requested some different name let's say amit and this doesn't exist in my company's database therefore it will return a 404 now coming back to my code next is your api view now api view is used so that the normal views can return an api data next is your response so this is where you get back the status or a particular response now if everything went fine it will return a 200 response or you can say 200 response similarly the 404 that we have just discussed it says that you have requested something but it doesn't exist anymore so these are some of the http responses then there are many more like that say 401 is not found 500 is your server error and things like that next is your status which will basically send back the status after that we have the name of the model that is my employees and then the name of the serializer that is employee serializer next what we have to do we have to create a class based view which basically inherits from an api view so let me create a class for it say class employee list and this inherits from an api view so here we will create two method get method and a post method so the very first method that is your get method it is used to return all the employees in our model and then the second method which is your post method it helps you to create a new employee so let me create these methods one by one and my next method that is my post so now what i'll do i'll go in my first method i'll just remove this pass which basically means do nothing and here i will pass in the request now i'll create a variable which stores all my objects so let me name it as employees or you can say employees one we'll have my model and we'll say objects and all next we have to serialize them which means that it will take all your objects and convert them into json so i'll take the serializer for that i'll take serializer so this is the name of my serializer and here i will pass in the employee which means all your objects and my second parameter would be many is equals to true so this second parameter that you can see here it means that there are many of them so here you don't have to return just one json object next we know every view function returns some http response so in our case it's json so what we have to do we have to return a json serialize.data so this is serializer next is your post function which says submitting all your data whereas your get function is reading or taking your data now with this we have completed our views file now what we have to do we have to connect or link it so for that we have to go to urls file so here we will go to our main project that is my project and we'll go to urls.py file so here you have to add some imports which are compatible with apis and rest framework so i'll add here from rest framework so this i'll be explaining it later as we go on and have more functions to play with so in my code you will not be requiring this as such but the other thing you require is to import your view so for importing your view you have to type in from web app import views now as you can see here it is only linking to my admin panel but now we have to create our own url to display the view 
for that I'll just copy the same line and I'll paste it over here so you must be knowing that these are in the form of regular expression so in spite of admin I can type in employees so that whenever I hit on employees it will return my view so just to make it easier I have to type in views dot employee list that we have just created So by hitting on employees, it will connect to my view and in my view, there is a class called as employee list. So I'll go to my views and here I'll see I have my list that is employee list and it will return these things as a view. Therefore going on employees, it will go to my views and then it will return the class that is employee list as view. So in this way, we'll get the data in a JSON format. So with this, a code is completed. Now what you have to do, you just have to throw this URL and connect to any website's database. And from that, you can get all the information from any device in the world, be it iPhone, be it your Android or anything. So now let me go back to my server and see whether this API is working or not. So this is my local host. Here I have to write employees, which is my URL that I've just created. Okay, so this is showing me an error that name true is not defined. So let me go back to my code and see in my views file. Now this will work. So I'll again go to my local host and I'll refresh it. So yes, it displayed. So as you can see here, I have all my employee information. I have their IDs, their first name and their last name. So this is the format of JSON, which are basically surrounded by curly braces, having all your data and a descriptive title to it. Now using this URL, you can check it anywhere and retrieve the same information. You can get it using any device in the world, be it your iPhone, Android or anything. So I'll just copy this URL, I'll go to the browser and I'll open my postman. So here I'll just paste my URL. So as you can see here, we have different types of requests. We have get, we have post, put, patch, delete and many more. So here I'm gonna simply make a get request. So I've already pasted my API and just I have to send it. So yes, this data has been displaying. So as you can see here, I have my data in JSON format which means that my API is working perfectly fine. So let me go back to my presentation now. So finally, we have successfully created a first RESTful API in Django. So with this, we have come to conclusion of today's session. I hope you find this session useful. In case you have any doubts with respect to any topic or anything with respect to demo, please write it down in the comment box and we'll be clearing it right away. Or you can probably connect with me in my next session. If not, we have a support team which is 24-7 available. You can always drop a mail to them and they'll be happy to help you. So with that, I'll take a leave. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.